God. You may sit, please. It is my pleasure that we are together for this uh, second missionary lecture. We want to welcome the pastors who are here for this uh, opportunity. And um, also for any person who came and is not a part of the Missionary School of Languages, but you are so interested that you took your time to come, it is always a wonderful blessing. So I want to just um, go into the word of the Lord because um, we could say that uh, time is always a limitation for us. So we want to take advantage of the time that the Lord has given us and uh, we will go under the title which is called Hearing the Voice of God. Hearing the Voice of God. And I want to read the first part of the scriptures in the first book of Samuel. First book of Samuel, chapter, one, chapter 2. Sorry, chapter 3. Chapter 3. First book of Samuel, chapter 3. And I'll start reading in verse 4. It says like this. The Lord called Samuel and he answered, here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called a child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for the word and the wonderful opportunity we received to be in your presence and in your house. We ask you tonight, O oh Lord, to give us the wonderful time with your word. Give us a mighty spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you and in the knowledge of your word. Help us that the word that we are going to receive may be alive for ourselves. That we may rejoice in your presence and at the same time, O oh Lord, that we may do our part in serving you. That everything, O oh Lord, may be clear before us. Open our eyes. Give us understanding Give us your spirit of wisdom and revelation. Lay the foundation we need that we may continually serve you in a better way. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Praise the Lord. You may see, please. Hearing the voice of God. It is one of the... Subjects that really always calls on ourselves. How can I hear the voice of God? I choose, I choose now to read here. And the verses we read is because here we find that someone that is interested in the Lord, is serving God, but at the same time, this um, person, which is a child, he is not yet aware of what it is, the word of the Lord. So we want to take this part to see that it is important for any kind of believer, and especially for the ones who at some point in time want to serve God, 
It is important to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord. Because that will guarantee you two different things. First, it will guarantee you that you will be always in the right track. It means you will be sure that you are going in the right direction. Which is very important. Because though we are saved, when Jesus Christ redeemed our souls, we got the forgiveness of our sin. And we got redemption, eternal life. However, while we are down here on this earth, we long for direction because we want to be sure where we are going to and what we are going to do and to be sure that what we are doing is the will of God for ourselves. So for that necessarily, you and I must learn to hear the voice of the Lord. The second thing you will get as a guarantee when you hear the voice of God is the manifestation of the power of God in your life. Because once you are in the right track, in the right direction, also you will have the opportunity to see God moving mightily because it is exactly what he wants to do. When we hear the voice of the Lord for direction, we have specific blessing. When we are not sure of God's direction, we plan something and we invite the Lord to take part in our plans. We say, Lord, I'm going to do this and I ask you to please bless what I'm planning to do. But when you learn how to hear the voice of God, you have a guarantee. God starts developing his plan and it is God who will invite you to come into his purpose. It's different. It's the opposite. When we are not sure, we elaborate a plan, we draw a map for ourselves. And we invite the Lord to enter into our plan or what we have decided. When we learn how to hear the voice of God, it's different. Then God himself, he starts his purpose and invites you to come into his purpose. This is very different. That's why the power of God will be manifested in the life of the person who may hear the voice of God, not because he is better than the one who has not learned how to, but because he has entered into a purpose that God already designed for him. So therefore his power is manifested there in a mighty way. Got it? I will explain it again, slowly. I want you to pay attention to this. What is the difference? between a person who learns how to hear the voice of God and the person who is a good Christian also because we are not blaming anybody. He's a good Christian, a good brother, a good child of God, but at the same time, he doesn't know how to hear the voice of God. What is the difference? Pay attention. When we don't know what is the will of God, then we draw a plan. We organize something for ourselves and then we invite the Lord to come and bless our steps. Got it? That is when we don't know how to hear the voice of God for direction. Now, what is the difference? The one who knows how to hear the voice of God for his direction, then will see the power of God in manifestation. Why? 
Because it is God himself who designs a purpose. God starts a purpose. And it is God who will invite you to come and take a part in his purpose. That is a big difference. For instance, Moses. Moses was in the wilderness. He was the shepherd for the cattle of his father-in-law. He was not thinking about coming to Egypt anymore. Suddenly he saw a burning bush. When he saw the burning bush and he drew near the Lord talked to him and said stop there don't come closer take off the shoes of your feet because you are standing on holy ground and then the Lord started speaking to Moses and the Lord revealed to Moses his purpose the Lord said, my people is in Egypt. They are suffering a lot. I already promised that I will take them to a promised land that I swore to his fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I want to now take them. It is the right time. And I want you to come and take my people out of Egypt. So it was God's purpose and God who had a purpose and that God who had drawn, who had designed a plan, invited Moses to join his plan, to come into his plan. So therefore the Lord said beforehand, he said, I will manifest my glory. I will do signs and miracles. And I will devastate the land of Egypt. Before Moses went there, God already had a plan and invited Moses and said, you are the one. So therefore, when Moses got to Egypt, he already had the guarantee that this power of God was going to move in such a mighty way. You see, that is the difference. Now, time runs so fast, so let me go into another point. Here, what we see is a child called Samuel. God is calling him Samuel. Samuel. He got up because he was on bed and said, here am I, and ran to the priest who was maybe in the next bedroom and he presented and said, here am I, you called me. The priest said, no, I didn't call you. Go and lay down again. So he went again to bed and again the same voice, Samuel, Samuel. He got up the second time and ran to the priest and said, you called me. Here I am. The priest said, no, I didn't call you. Go. Go to bed again. So he went to bed again. And the Bible says exactly there after the second time. In verse 7. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Verse 7, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. So it's the same case what I'm, take, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to explain. To you. There is a man, is a child here, there is a priest there, and God is dealing with this young man, this child, maybe a teenager at the moment, but the Lord says here, but Samuel did not know yet. So 
Samuel did not know yet the Lord. And he was serving the Lord. But it says he didn't know yet the Lord. And then it emphasized what the Lord wants to say and says, Neither was the word of God yet revealed to him. So why did, why it says he didn't know the Lord yet? Because he didn't know how to hear the voice of God. And it says, the word of God was not yet revealed to him. In other words, he didn't know yet how to know the voice of the Lord. And since he didn't know it was the Lord, he ran in the wrong direction. He didn't run to the Lord, he ran to the priest. Because he didn't know the voice of God. Are you following me? So the point tonight is hearing the voice of God. We must learn how to hear the voice of God so that we may know what the Lord wants for us. Because many times we have good desires. We come to the ways of God and we have good desires. But it doesn't mean that your good desire is the will of God. Not that you are doing any wrong. Maybe you desire good things, but not everything which is good is the will of God for you. Simple. Because there are many different things to do in life. So the Lord already knows what he has designed for you. You are the one who don't know. But he knows. So when we learn how to hear his voice, so he will tell us, this is. What Samuel was doing was serving God in the small uh, service in the church. He was helping the priest. Maybe he was lighting the lamps. Maybe he was cleaning a place. I don't know. He was doing something there. But God didn't want Samuel in the temple. Pay attention to that. God wanted Samuel in a different role. Not cleaning. Not doing. Though he was doing it wholeheartedly. And his mother offered him for that service. Yes. Hannah, she offered Samuel for that. And he was glad doing it. But it was not exactly the will of God for him. God wanted something different. Yes, you are cleaning. I, I'm really glad that you are doing it. You are serving. I'm really glad. But I have something else and different for you in life. And God is now speaking to him. The problem is he doesn't know yet the voice of God. So, in other words, the word of God was not yet revealed to him. In other words, he didn't know yet how to know that it was the voice of God. Then the Lord called the third time, and the priest, it says, he came the third time to the priest, and the priest perceived, it says, the priest perceived that it was God who was calling the child. But as you notice, it took three different occasions for the priest to perceive that God was talking to the child. So it looks like if even the priest didn't have much 
practice in hearing God's voice. Even the priest himself was not so accustomed so that it took for the priest three different occasions to understand, oh, God is talking to the boy. When he understood, he told the boy, Samuel, if you hear again the calling, don't run to me. If you hear again the calling, you answer and say, Lord, here am I. Speak because your servant wants to hear you. You see the difference? Okay, so it is just, I will just stop there. It's just to show you that the difference is when we learn how to hear the voice of God, then we can come into the purpose. When we learn how to hear, we will fall into the purpose of God. In the meanwhile, you will jump here, you will run there, you will do that, you will do, but, but you are not sure exactly. And we start doing what we see others doing. Because that is, that is good. You must do something. But there was something different for Samuel. When the Lord spoke to him, said, listen to me. And so he started giving to him the revelation of his word. And the word of God says, and all Israel from one border to the other learned that Samuel was a prophet of God. So God wanted Samuel as a prophet, but he was just cleaning. Sometimes the person maybe want to be a prophet, but the Lord wants him cleaning. But sometimes he will be cleaning and the Lord wants him to be a prophet. You, you never know. And he will bless you and manifest his power in whatever he decides for you. Whatever it is. Not necessarily you have to be a prophet to see the manifestation of the power of God. You could be cleaning and see the manifestation. You will see in the New Testament two men, Stephen and Philip. They were just deacons for the church. And at that time, what they were doing was to attend to the widows in the church. Social work. But God started manifesting his power. So what is important here is that you hear the voice of God. Amen. Okay. Let me go to another point. Let me check. Here in Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. Joel, that small book in the Old Testament. In chapter 2, verse 28 and 29, it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. So here God is saying that he can speak also through dreams and visions. If you go to the book of Numbers in chapter 12, at the time when the Lord rebuke Aaron and Mary, brother and sister to Moses. You remember when they murmured against Moses? Mary 
or Miriam as you want to call her. And Aaron, brother and sister to Moses, they murmured against the man of God. Then the Lord rebuked them. And watch what he said. When I raise a prophet among you, I will talk to him through visions and dreams. Not so with my servant Moses, because with him I will talk face to face from my own mouth. So there are many different ways, but the Lord already clarified to them, I will not speak to people like that, but just to Moses. The other prophets, I will speak to them in visions, in dreams. And here in Joel chapter 2, it says, I will pour out my Holy Spirit upon all flesh and your young men and your old men shall dream dreams and see visions. What I'm emphasizing is it is the Holy Spirit that will use visions and dreams to talk to you or to anybody. Now the question is how do I know that this dream was from the Holy Spirit? How do I know that this is the voice of God? Because you can dream. We are made to dream. I mean, physically speaking. Most of people dream. Sometimes even we dream while we are awake. We love dreaming. <laughs> Even awake. You dream you are driving. Oh, that big fancy car. But in your dreams. In reality, you dream a small old car. But you love to dream that you are driving big fancy car. And well, we go to, to bed also. And sleeping normally physically speaking our brain is designed to dream so the four people always dream not everybody and when I say always I don't say that every night but normally people dream now how can I understand that this is a simple dream and this is the voice of God through a dream And you will find that there are two opposite things. On one side, you will have people who normally want to see every dream as if it is the voice of God. And they are always saying, did you dream anything? I will tell you what it is. If you got any dream, tell me. I will give you the interpretation. They are always there. They are the interpreters. They always want to hear the voice of God in any dream. Although sometimes those dreams are just dreams of full bed, you know, and the belly is, you know, you ate too much. So these people, sometimes they want to, to see and to hear the voice of God everywhere. On the other hand, you have all the people who dream dreams of God and who never understand that, that this is a dream that comes from the Lord. <gasps> it is weird. I dream a dream and it is so, I saw an angel coming up and down on a ladder and I saw that God was up there and I saw that the God was telling me, but they don't understand it is God. So, so you have the two opposite sides. We must learn how to hear that God speaks, but we don't try to make something out of nothing. 
How do I know that it is God speaking to me? When we go a little further, we try to explain. But to some people, God will speak clearly in a dream. For instance, to Joseph, Mary's husband. It says, by night an angel of God came and told him, don't fear to receive Mary as a wife. Because she has conceived by the Holy Spirit. And explain clearly. Paul used to have the same kind of dreams. When you go to the book of Acts, you will find that God once told Paul through a dream. He saw a Macedonian man. And he was calling him, please, come to us and help us. Here in Macedonia. It was clear. There was another time when he was in a big storm. And the storm was about to destroy the, the, the ship that they were traveling in. They were sailing in that ship. And it says, the angel of God appeared to me last night. And spoke to me clearly. And said, don't worry. Just the ship will be destroyed. But God has granted you the lives of all of them that are sailing with you in this uh, vessel. So he used to dream dreams where God spoke clearly the straight message. So, 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 so. Good. But you go to another people in the scriptures who dreamed dreams and saw visions that were not so clear, needed an interpretation. For instance, Daniel, I saw a beast coming from the east. And suddenly I saw another beast needed an interpretation. And it says that in one of these visions, he said, Lord, I don't understand. Explain to me. In the case of Joseph, the son of Jacob, he used to dream dreams that needed interpretations he understood I was gathering the sheep in the field and I saw your sheep bowing down to my own so I needed an interpretation then he dreamed another dream. I saw the moon and 11 stars. And they were bowing down to me. Needed an interpretation. Then he learned how to interpret the dreams. But he learned by the spirit of God. And when he was in jail, two Egyptian men dreamed dreams. They couldn't understand the dreams. He gave the interpretation for them. And it was accurate. When Pharaoh dreamed two different dreams in the same dream. Or let me say in that way, two different visions in the same dream. Nobody could interpret the dreams. So they called Joseph and then he said, this is the interpretation. So God could speak in dreams. But remember, there are two different ways that God could talk to you in dreams. Clearly, like to Joseph, the husband of Mary. Or as God used to speak in dreams to Paul. Clearly, straight. Or God could use a dream that needs an interpretation. 
which is best both of them because God is the one who knows how he's going to speak to you and the best is what the Lord wants are you following me so we must pray that the Lord may always help us to learn how to hear his voice that I may identify this is something coming from God for me because that will make a whole difference when the Lord is leading you when the Lord is directing you your whole life is different it's different totally different I may tell you that it's totally different he will deliver you he always wants to deliver you but sometimes the Lord wants to deliver me and I from any danger from anything but I don't know and therefore I miss the direction of God deliverance for me Are you following me? If we don't know and God wants to deliver me, I may miss the deliverance of God because I miss the direction. Just to put it in a simple example, I'm going so. There is a danger there. This is a free road. The Lord wants to deliver me and the Lord is telling me, don't go that way. Come this way. But since you don't know yet how to hear the Lord's voice you continue that way and you miss the deliverance of God because you couldn't hear you thought it was you you thought it was you I, it, I got an impression but I didn't pay attention see some people I, oh yes it was something and I, I was, but I, I don't know what happened I got an impression something was but I don't know what it was. I continued and God wanted to deliver you, but you missed God's deliverance because you missed God's direction for your deliverance. So we'll get into troubles easily. Sometimes even the Lord can lead you to shh to keep silent while facing specific situation because normally people can talk to you and you could speak freely because they are talking to you they are, they are asking you so you but if you learn how to hear God's voice the Lord will tell you shh 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 don't say anything now don't speak now. That's the deliverance of God. But since you didn't know how to hear the Lord's direction, you opened your whole heart. Are you following my indications? Well, I'm not a doctor. I'm trying to explain to you the best way I can. I'm just a pastor. Let me go with you to 1 Kings chapter 19. It is the case of a man of God called Elijah. 1 Kings chapter 19. Verse 9 to 13 it says, And he came thither into a cave and lodged there and behold the word of the Lord came to him and he said unto him what doest thou here Elijah and he said I have been very jealous for the word of uh, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant 
thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mound before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and breaking pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? So this is a specific case when a man of God is in a great need. Elijah was a man of God, a prophet. He needed the direction of God at any cost. And God wanted to talk to him because at that point in time, he was in a big confusion. Elijah was in a big confusion at the moment. He was depressed. He was driven by his own thoughts. He saw things which were not real. Are you paying attention? I say, he saw things which were not real. If you study this chapter, you may understand that Elijah, according to the scriptures, and when you study this, you see that it is like that. Elijah was a man like you and I. He was seeing things that were not real. He was drawing his own picture about the situation. I will show you. For instance, he said, I am left alone. He, they have killed all your prophets. And I am left alone. If you study the previous chapters and this chapter, it wasn't true. Because the steward for Ahab the king told him when he met Elijah, I kept 100 prophets in caves and I fed them with bread and water. So he had received the news that there were at least 100 prophets that were still alive. But while he entered into his depression, he said, they killed all your prophets. And I alone am left. Even the, the hundred prophets was not the whole thing. Because God said, not only 100 prophets, I have how many? God said to him. Yet, in verse 18, I have left me 7,000 in Israel, which had not bounded, surrendered, which have not given in to Baal. 7,000. At least 100 prophets and 7,000 people. But look what Elijah said. Your people all left. 
you and they destroyed your altars and I alone am left. So he was like you and I. We normally when we are facing situations in our humanity, we draw our own pictures. You understand that? He was like you and I. That is one of the things. I want to show you something else. He was walking for 40 days and 40 nights when he came to the cave in the Mount, Mount of God. 40 days and 40 nights. When he entered there, he said, they are about to kill me. They want to kill me with the sword. But when you go to the beginning of the chapter, it says, And they have told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not yourself as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Jezebel gave the man of God 24 hours to kill him. Tomorrow at this time. And he continued running and running and running for 40 days. The date line was already gone. It was 24 hours. But he's still running for 40 days and 40 nights and he's still saying, they are chasing me and I feel the sword right here. Not because he was a bad man, not because he was an unbeliever, but because he was like you and I, exactly like that it is you and me that's why we need the voice of the lord because when he spoke all this he said listen i want you to turn and go back the same way you came here go back and you will do this, anoint me, this one to be a king uh, on Syria, and this one to be a king of Israel, and this one to be a prophet in your place. Because I will do something, and I will make the 7,000, the 7,000 who are still following me, I will give them a privilege. They will remain, they will be my remnant. Go. So he had to start back all his way because he was fleeing from his own imagination. <laughs> he was fleeing this way and he fed the sword here, but the Lord said, go back. It is not true. In other words, Elijah was fleeing his own imagination. He imagined he was alone. He was not alone. He imagined he was the only prophet. He was not the only prophet. He imagined Jezebel was going to kill him because she said, but she gave him just 24 hours. That deadline was gone long ago. The Lord said, go back. You are fleeing something which is just in your mind. I still have something for you to do. But the only way for him to do this is because God spoke to him. Otherwise, he never goes back. So that is the importance of hearing the voice of God. Because with the voice of God, you will be able to rebuild your life. 
with the voice of God, you will be able to start afresh. It means to start again. With the voice of God, you will be able to do things out of nothing because it is God who does the things, not men. When you are down because your capacity, your emotions are not strong enough, the Lord says, I give you strength when you have none. But you must hear the voice of God at that moment. Otherwise, you remain there in, in that mountain and you die there. But calls my attention that he said, or that the word of God says, he heard, let me check again with you. In verse 11. The Lord passed by and a great and a strong wind rent the mountains and breaking pieces of the rocks. But the Lord was not there in the wind. Normally, you would think that is the Lord there. Everything was destroyed. And you are praying. So immediately you know, yes, yes, right there. It's just the Lord was not there. Then it says, and then after it happened, a great earthquake. Everything shaking. Wow. The presence of God. But it says, the Lord was not there. Then it says, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Then it says, after that, are you still here? How many are you still here? Are you still alive? Yes. I know you are tired. Days are long. But I, I will speak to you just some few minutes and finish. Listen to this because this part is important. It says, after this, there was a small, still voice. What is a small, still voice? A whispering. A whispering. Small voice. Whispering. Something that you must pay attention to it. Otherwise you will never hear. Can you understand? No, but that is a small, still voice. Now you find my example. You say, Pastor, please say it louder. I cannot understand. That is a small, still voice. That if you are not trained, you will not be able to hear what the person is saying. Because it is a small, small, still voice. It's whispering. You must pay attention to it. If you don't pay attention to it, you will never understand what is going on. Pastor, please. Yes, yes. Pay attention. That is a small, still voice. Now, how can you hear that small, still voice? It will not be the rocks and the mountain breaking. It is not the earthquake. It is not the fire. It is something that calls for your sensibility. If you are not a sensible person, I mean in your spirit, by the Holy Spirit, you will never know that small voice.
you will think it is your thoughts. You will think it is your imagination. You will think it was an impression. Have you ever heard? I have heard many different people saying, for instance, oh, this and this and this happened. Oh, and it is so strange. I had like two days before an impression that something like that was going to happen. But the person didn't know it was the still small voice speaking. He said, I got an impression. It was a small, still voice, but you didn't understand that it was a voice. You understood it was an impression. And because it was an impression, you don't trust your impressions. So you never paid attention. You never did. I have heard people who told me, oh, two days before, I had an impression that something was going to happen to me and some things were going to come and, and, and just hit me badly and the Lord was talking to them. But they didn't know. It was the small, still voice. They didn't do anything because... For them, it was just an impression. The word of God says, when the prophet heard that small, still voice, which is really a whispering. He says, he covered his face. Because he was afraid to see the Lord. And he ran to the entrance of the cave and the Lord of the voice of the Lord came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And then the conversation continued, but with that small, still voice. How can I learn when that small, still voice is there? Because sometimes we think, that God doesn't speak today. And we pray, Lord, I want to hear your audible voice. Like Moses. But the Lord said, it was just with Moses. To you, will not be like that. So you are, you are praying for something the Lord said beforehand, not for you. Why do you want to hear that audible voice because it's easier to identify but the Lord says you must open your heart you must learn how to be sensible to the voice of God sensible by the Holy Spirit how can you become sensible by the Holy Spirit there are so many things that come together to make you sensible to the Holy Spirit. First of all, you must learn how to love. The Lord said, one commandment I give you, one, that you may love each other. As I have loved you. Because the word of God says. That hatred kills. Kills your sensibility. Love is important. We must fight back. Hatred and resentment against our people and against humanity. Sometimes we cannot forgive people because they did something so hard to me. I don't forgive. I, pastor, don't ask me to forgive that. I cannot forgive that. When we are in that position, it's hard 
to hear because that is a small, still voice. You must be quiet. Love. Love. It says that it is the greatest of the gifts. Study, study. First Corinthians chapter 11, 12, 13. It says, I will show you a better way. If you desire this and this and this, but I will show you, says the word of God. The way of love. So if you want to be sensible, love. Love and love. Even if you get any hard experience in your life with anybody, you have the right to face those harsh moments and to feel upset, but must go to the presence of God and ease that sentiment. And the word of God says something which is really important for you so that you may love, overcome hatred. It says, pray for the ones who speak wrong against you. Pray for the ones who hate you. So do something before the Lord. Pray that the Lord may bless them. Don't think that you are better than the other ones. Although sometimes your brother or your sister is the one to be blamed, it doesn't mean that you are better than him. So therefore we may pray for them. Have mercy on him, on her, as you have mercy on me. Love is one of the things that make you sensible to the voice of God. Secondly, humility, humbleness. Because the Lord says, the ones who exalt themselves, the Lord will abase them. In other words, will bring them down, will humiliate them. But the ones who humble themselves, the Lord will exalt them. So humility, because we are not better than anybody. We are just blessed by the Lord, but not better than the other people. No matter the function in life, no matter the role in church, no matter the position, whatever it is, you are not better than anybody. You are just yourself. We must humble ourselves. Hmm? On the other side, To learn that the guidance of the Lord and to hear the voice of God is not for us to make a show of it. We don't have to make a show. The direction of the Lord for ourselves is not for us to show, it's for us to live. Live. When you get the direction of God for you, like in the case of Elijah, the Lord is saying, no, Elijah, so and so, it's for him to live for his glory. It's for him to, to have that experience and to follow the guidance of God. It's not for Elijah to stand there, I now heard the voice of God, I will tell you what is the word of God. No, the Lord is saying, you go your same way, go back, do this, do that, do that, do that, because I want you to do, 
This is not to make a show, it's to receive the direction that we may live according to his will. Because when we want to make a show of the voice of God, normally people will twist the purpose of the Lord. And when we want to make a show of the voice of the Lord, we'll get into many wrong situations. Because we'll start speaking from God and we'll finish speaking from ourselves. So the voice of God is not for us to make a show. That, when we understand that, then our sensibility will be increased. And I'm not speaking about prayer and the word of God first because I'm just trying to add it some other things that people don't take into consideration. Because normally when we say, how do I do to become sensible to the, boy, the, the voice of God? Immediately we think about that which is real. It is okay. It is right. Prayer, yes. Go to the word of God, yes. But I have spoken to you about three more elements. They are not the only ones, but at least these elements are going to help you. If we pray, if we study the word of God, if we love, if we forget about shows, if we humble ourselves, then we'll become more sensible that we may hear the word of the Lord. Amen. So hearing the voice of God is really important for you and I. And I hope that short explanation I have given you tonight is going to help us. Because we want to do the will of the Lord. 